Welcome back to Empowder Tutoring's Read Alouds with Miss Katie. As always, head to our YouTube page, Google Empowered Tutoring Inc. in the search engine, and you will find, oh my gosh, all of the books that Miss Katie has read. And then hit that subscribe button so you don't miss another one. Today we're reading The Cran Man, a true story of the invention of the Crayola Crayon. The Crayon Man by Natasha Bebo, illustrated by Steven, Steven Salerno. Once there was a man who saw color everywhere. He noticed the yellow-orange petals of the black-eyed Susans in his garden. He marveled at the rich scarlet-red tones of the cardinal's feathers. He admired the deep blue-greens of the waves in the sea. Color made him really, really happy. But all day long at work, all he saw was black. Black dust, black tar, black smoke, black ink, black dye, black shoe polish. His name was Edwin Binney, and he was an inventor. He worked with his cousin, C. Harold Smith. Together, they were Binney and Smith. Harold was a great salesman. He loved to travel the world. Edwin was curious. He had a knack for listening and making what people needed. Edwin invented a new kind of inexpensive slate pencil that wrote very smoothly. smoothly. It was gray. Children loved it. He invented a wax crayon that would write on wood and paper packaging. It was really, really black. People loved it. So when everyone, including Edwin's wife, Alice, told him that children needed better, cheaper crayons, he listened. They said, the crayons we have are big, dull, and clumsy. The lumps of colored clay only make fat, chunky lines, and the artist crayons from Europe are far too expensive. They crumble and break easily. Some are even poisonous. Edwin thought about his company's inventions. When you drew a picture with their gray slate pencil, it rubbed off at the drop of a hat. When you drew a picture with their white chalk, it smudged everywhere. If you drew a picture with Edwin's new really black crayon, it was, well, really black. None of these inventions were any good for drawing in color. So Edwin listened, and Edwin invented, in a small stone mill in Pennsylvania, in a top secret lab. Edwin's team experimented. How could they make big, better, stronger crayons? Melted paraffin wax, perhaps? Now for the crayons colors. Grinding, grinding, grinding up rocks and minerals into fine powders. Mixing, mixing, slate for gray, earth for yellow, red and brown, perhaps. Oh, yes, and lapis for blue. Pounding, sifting, and heating the colored powders, would they be bright enough? Edwin's team kept on trying. They kept on experimenting. They came home covered in color. They experimented some more and discovered a pinch of this pigment, a sploosh of that one, a little hotter and a little cooler, and voila, lots of different shades. Now there were greens, oranges, violets, and pinks too. Edwin came home colored in color. In a large tub at the mill, Edwin's team measured out the ingredients, melted wax, clay to thicken, something for texture, colored powders, each in just the right amount every time to make a top secret formula. Slowly, carefully stirring by hand, they poured the special formula into thin, crayon-shaped molds, smaller than any other inventors, just the right size for children's hands. The mixture cooled and hardened. Edwin watched and waited. Finally, one summer evening in June 1903, Edwin came home covered in color and announced that he'd invented a new kind of colored crayon. But what should he call it? Alice had an idea. She said, let's mix the French word crayi for a stick of chalk and the word ola from the word oliginous, meaning oily, like the oily texture of the crayon wax to invent a new word. 
Crayola. Crayola. Edwin listened. Binny and Smith shipped out the first Crayola crayon boxes. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. Eight colored crayons for only a nickel. Edwin waited. Would children like them? Children did. Now they could draw a tiny green caterpillar or the big blue sky. Their drawings wouldn't smudge and they wouldn't rub out. They were bright and could last a long, long time. Excitement over the new colorful inventions spread like wildfire. Admirers from far and wide flocked to marvel at Binny and Smith's inventions at the St. Louis World's Fair. The company's dustless chalk even won a gold medal. Proudly, Edwin and Harold showed it off, especially on their new Crayola crayon boxes. Every day, Edwin brought colorful bouquets from his garden to inspire the Crayola team. They made crayons in even more shades and later asked children to help name some of them. At last, because of Edwin Binney, the man who saw color everywhere, who had a knack for listening and making what people needed, children all around the world would reach for just the right shade to draw anything. And this is how Crayola crayons are made today. And the man who loved color, Edwin Binney himself. <laughs>